Oh yeah! Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to part... Hey! I'm the Smart Booza. My name is Vinny B and welcome aboard. Before going too far, if you're a newcomer, welcome. And please consider subscribing. And if you don't want to miss any of my videos that I post every two weeks, click, move the mouse on top of, you know, the bell, clicky clicky. Okay, today the goal is to install the cooling system. You know, the thumbnail was cooling system. Yeah, that, that that's what it is. And on the smart booza, there's two. Yeah, the first one being for the engine. It's a mix of Preston and water with pipes and radiator, yeah, and all that good stuff. And the second one is for the oil. The challenge here is to integrate part of the Hayabusa and part of the smart cooling system. <clears throat> one being Japanese and the other one being German. That doesn't work at all. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah, we'll make it work for the oil system. Um, since there's none on the smart, I will start from the Hayabusa and relocate the oil radiator at the front of the car. Yeah, if you're following the channel for some time now, uh, you already saw me build a big air baffle to pick up some cold air from underneath the car to cool the engine bay. And during design, I was really hoping to get the oil radiator half inside the car and half below it, so some fresh air can pass through it. But we all saw during installation that, in fact, the radiator is completely inside the car. This is no bueno. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So the other day I had a chat with a friend of mine and we both agreed that the best option to preserve the life of the engine was to move forward the radiator. That's okay. Daddy's gonna take good care of you. Because you know. Mm -hmm. hmm? No power? Is it the engine yet? Okay, let's start with the easiest section, which is the engine cooling system. The task on hand was to understand both cooling systems from the Suzuki and from the Smart. The Hayabusa is pretty straightforward. You have a pump that pumps up the cooling fluid inside the engine. At the exit, right here, there's a thermostat that blocks the flow until it reaches a certain temperature. Since the pump is directly driven by the engine, it always turns. So you need a certain circulation of coolant even when the thermostat is closed. So that's why they added a bypass hose to bring back some coolant to the pump and push it right back up inside the engine. Once the thermostat reaches its temperature, it will open and the flow will go down that pipe and to the radiator where it will be cooled and connected to the Suzuki radiator. You have an overflow reservoir and it's connected by the cap right here. And this cap has three functions. First, well, it's a cap, so you can fit up the radiator by it. The second function, it's a pressure relief valve. And the third one, it's a vacuum valve. So if you've got too much pressure or air in the system, the valve inside the cap will open up, letting through the air and the pressure. But if you're missing some water in the system, there's like a vacuum valve that will bring back some coolant inside the system if you need it. The only problem I had with the Hayabusa cooling system was to figure out what this outlet is for. Because connected to it was a smaller hose. That hose had the same path that the bigger one. And they both end up almost at the same height inside the radiator. That's the small hose, that's the big one. There's no check valves, there's nothing there. So I called my buddies that appreciate more the other type of vehicles. You know the wrong one, the one with only two wheels? Yeah, those guys. And they didn't know either what it was. So I did a lot of research to finally find out that this hose is to bleed hair from the system. That point is the highest in the entire system. The air coming back out of the engine will branch off inside that hose and it will end up a bit closer to the cap which will release the air inside the reservoir so that's an automatic bleeding system since there's already a system like this integrated in the smart cooling system i will probably only bleed this one the first time and plug it afterwards on the smart oh that's something else the main difference 
is that the reservoir is pressurized. The cooling is coming from the bottom hose right here. It passes through a 90 degree elbow. Inside that elbow, there's a check valve. This check valve has the same purpose as the cap on the radiator of the Hayabusa. It will release any pressure or any air from the system. Also, there's another outlet to refill coolant in the system if needed. And that outlet was the return from the heater system to heat the inside of the car. But that system is completely canceled. You know, with the Hayabusa engine being right behind my back, I don't think I need a heating system, right? Oh, and by the way, if there's any smart cooling system expert that are currently watching and saw that I didn't explain something correctly or that I'm missing something very important, please, please leave a comment. I can really take all the help that I can get. And one thing that I had to integrate into the smart cooling system was the Hayabusa temperature sensor. This little guy uh, normally it's here. <laughs> this little fellow will start the fan if the cooling is too hot. So yeah, I guess it's machining time and installing pipes and all sorts of things to complete the smart Booza cooling system. Salut les Français Now for the oil cooling system. So, okay, let's make some fittings and install high pressure, high temperature, extremely good quality transmission oil hoses. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I did have a bit of a surprise here. That is the oil pan. So when I unscrewed the bolt, I found out a small surprise, which is this. It's kind of a homemade with sealing hoary. It's probably made out of uh, something like this, like a gasket maker. And this is not a good sign. So I found out putting back on the bolt that the threads are completely stripped. So yeah, I will take take care of that and then I will put back on the oil pan and then I will be able to complete and finish the cooling system for the oil. And speaking of finishing the cooling system, this is one of four of the fittings. They are now completely machine welded and painted. I hope it's gonna be a breeze to install, so let's find out. Only major issue I had with this section, except the fact that the good damn it oil pan was completely stripped, was that I ordered 25 feet of that high pressure hose and only received 18 of it. Yeah. The real problem here is that <clears throat> it maybe took me, I don't know, half a day, maybe more, to realize that mm, I was trying to route the hoses the way I planned it and I just could figure it out why I was missing so much length at the end. So yeah, I guess lesson learned. So don't be a Vinny B and always check what you receive before installing it on your project, right? Yeah, I guess that's obvious. And 23 and 2. That's 25. Perfect. I'm good to go. Now, both systems are now installed. There's so many now, 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 now. Then now I can now install the front now hand. Yay! The cooling system are now installed. It's just done. Yes, check. Next one. Thank you for sticking with me till the end of this video. Like, subscribe, share it on other platforms if you wanted to. That would be awesome.
and see you in two weeks for the next episode on the pedal box, the braking system. It's not completed yet. No, nope. the braking system is not done. So see ya. <laughs> <laughs>